if you have been waiting for a full garden tour with plant names and locations, today is your lucky day. So get your pen and paper and let's get started. Welcome to Clark Cottage Gardens. I'm Erin Clark and today I am going to give you a tour of my gardens. I'm excited to show you around. It is September here in Maine, Zone 5A, and things are kind of coming to an end. I hate to say that, but it's true. So I figured I'd show you around one more time before fall hits, but um, fear not because in the fall, we are going to be planting things, and that is exciting as well. Um, we are working on a very exciting project for this fall, and if you stick around till the end of this video, I will tell you all about it and show you some videos and pictures of what we are planning here. So, for now, let us get started on the tour, but stay tuned because in the end, we are going to see uh, a little something fun. All right. Okay, let's start our tour right up here at Sweet Pea Cottage, which is behind me. Um, I've got a couple of lavender topiaries here, and down below um, I've got some calabacoa, a salmon color on both sides. Just sweet. This smells delicious. Uh, I've got Nepeta, Walker's Low on either side, and I like to do repeating patterns, as you know. So I've got Nepeta and Nepeta and Nepeta two or three times up and down the path. Um, I planted some zinnias that I grew from seed starting in about March in the basement, brought them out to a little uh, greenhouse that I had last year and finally after the whole month of June was nothing but rain um, finally got them into the ground in about oh, I don't know it's probably the first of July that I was able to get them in and these are Oklahoma salmon um, they're not I don't know they're pretty right but they're not my favorite they have a bit too much orange in them for me but they seem to complement sweet pea cottage so I'm just gonna pretend I love them <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. They actually bring so much color, especially right now um, where everything is just kind of dying back, all the perennials. So these are annuals. These will come out in the fall and um, I will have to replace them next year. Uh, so I'll have to decide what I use next year. I mean, they are pretty. I've done them two years in a row now. So obviously I like them, but I don't know. I'm going to do something different next year, I think. I planted some Cosmos which have yet really to bloom up here. Um, they were also planted very late because of the rain. These are uh, apricot cosmos and I, they are about to bloom. They're very sweet. I have some on the other side. Oh, there's one down here. I don't know if you can see it, but it almost has a shimmer to it. It's a little bit of pink then, and they're um, tipped with the apricot color, which is very pretty with Sweet Pea Cottage. Um, let's see, I have got some Gora. As you can see right here, whirling butterflies, blush colored ones. And these sometimes overwinter here in zone 5A and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just, um, get, it gets too cold and they die and I have to replace them. But I think these ones were here last year as well as these ones uh, across the way. Um, these ones aren't doing as well. I've got foxglove on either side here and those were apricot beauty. And those were gorgeous this year. I don't know if you saw June's 
video, but those were stunning. I loved them. Um, so I did grow some more in the greenhouse and I placed them in. So hopefully next year I'll get the same sort of show. Probably won't be as prolific as this year, but I'm hoping. I've got Ladies Mantle Thriller on either side and I've got those, as you know, those are one of my very favorites and I've got those placed in mounds all the way up and down the uh, pathway as well. Some more zinnias, some more nepeta. Oh, and I've got a silver mound, artemisia, on either side too, and I've got those in mounds up and down the path. Those are usually my go-tos, the ladies mantle, the silver mound, and the nepeta. I really love the look of those. The silver mound adds that lush foliage, and the nepeta has the gorgeous purple spires and the lady ma ladies mantle has the chartreuse flowers and then when they die back their foliage is all still rather attractive because those are blooming early in the season so uh, they end up looking pretty anyway and they support the other flowers that bloom after them now moving further down the path I've got some more Gora that seem to survive a little tiny bit on this side. I've got uh, my Gomfrina, which I also um, grew from seed down in the basement in the winter. I've got hardy geranium. Now you know that's another one of my go-to plants and it is called Vision Light Pink and that is absolutely beautiful in the spring along with the ladies mantle and the nepeta. So we've got the pink and the chartreuse and the purple all work together so well. Some more ladies mantle, some more gora, some more nepeta, some more silver mound and I planted some cosmos that have gotten a little dry. Um, these are the Sonata blend, so they've got all different color. They've got the deep dark pink and they've got the uh, regular pink and the white and it all comes in a little blend. Uh, so I usually do a lot of those. A beautiful little Cleome that was a volunteer just ended up here. I had a lot of Cleome last year. I don't know if you remember that, but um, this year I didn't have that many. I tried to grow them and they did not grow from seed. I don't know. Um, I don't know why. And so I bought a whole bunch and just like the rest of my plants, I couldn't get them in until the beginning of June. And then they just seemed stunted and they just were not as pretty as they usually are. So I was really happy that this little guy bounced up here. And he's got a little friend down here too. Um, this is actually a planter right here that my son got me for Mother's Day and it has just continued to bloom profusely all year, all season, I mean. Um, poof, bugs, some more nepeta, nepeta, and uh, gomfrina. I've got some foxglove. Oh, I had these beautiful uh, real charmer daisies that were right here and I've got those planted all throughout the garden. Those are probably one of my top five favorite plants are those real charmer daisies. I just think they are so pretty and they last for a really long time at the end of, oh, it's usually right in, in August. Now I am back further down the path from Sweet Pea that uh, leads to the courtyard garden, which is back that way. And um, I've got a couple of different beds here and here. I tried to keep them similar, although they are different shapes. So I needed to make them their own entities as well. Um, I have another planter over in this one, which really was a flop this year, <laughs> I have to say. I um, grew some of these petunias. I think they're called balcony petunias and I grew them from seed and I I don't know I do not like them but anyway they weren't growing at first so I thought I'd put a little uh, lavender topiary in here and grow them around them and then they turn into these monster petunias so they're a little bit of color but I certainly would not do that again um, I've got these beautiful strawberry shake hydrangea from Monrovia plants and these are gorgeous. These are so, so pretty. They start out uh, white and creamy like this 
and then they get to a light, light pink like this. And then they go to this deep, gorgeous, gorgeous pink, almost antique -y pink, but, but oh, it's so pretty. I love those. So when those get a little bit bigger, I think that that will make a huge statement right here in front of the um, gates. Um, this, I don't, I hope you can see this. It is my very, very first dahlia that I've ever grown. I'm so proud of it. I figured if I had a dog named Dahlia, I definitely need to have some dahlias. So this is my first little foray into the dahlia world. Um, I'll probably be doing a lot more next year, but for now, uh, I am pretty proud that I at least have one. I've got some more over here. Oh, oh my gosh. There's another bloom. Look at it. I have no idea what these are called. Not a clue. I uh, ran out one day in June and it was raining probably the hour before and the hour after. I had one hour to plant 80 dahlias. So I was running around like a lunatic out here planting and planting and planting and only part of them came up. They, it was just too wet but it was going to be too late if I didn't plant them then. It was going to be too late in the season and I wouldn't even have one bloom. So anyway, I'm just pleased with what I've got. <laughs> um, another trouble is this little guy right here, which is a blo uh, boomerang lilac tree, just like the one over in that area. But I don't know, something happened to this guy. Its leaves are wrong and they, it's diseased somehow. I'm very disappointed in it. I'm hoping it clears up over the winter and comes back fresh as can be, but I have my doubts. That would be very sad. Um, Rose of Sharon. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the variety of this one. I got this at the end of last year and planted it and I forgot to look it up for this video. Sorry about that. Um, I will put it in the comments if I can find the exact variety, but it's a very pretty pink. Back here, these were my delphinium. They just need to be cut down. I've got uh, Thai Jade Pink flocks here and they have been attacked with uh, mildew. All my flocks Puh! drives me crazy. I've got this sweet little tick seed coreopsis back here. I've got to prop this little baby up a little bit. It's pretty but it likes to spread out. Okay what else do I have? Oh look at this. I've got some nepeta that has come back. See, this is the beautiful purple that I get in June, um, but it's all over and it is so pretty. But have you ever smelled nepeta? It is the stinkiest plant. I always hate cleaning it up in the fall because it smells like not cat mint, if you know what I'm saying. A little bit more like cat pee, if you ask me. No, I don't like that at all. And another one of the um, strawberry shake hydrangeas here. I did have some <laughs> sweet pea, some perennial sweet pea growing up this. I didn't see a whole lot of flowers on it. Um, I have my John Davis roses that are peeking through. Aren't those gorgeous? I love those. And this is their, ooh, ooh, Japanese beetle. Ooh, I hate you. Sorry, I really do hate them. Um, and this is a John Davis rose that in June, I'm sure if you look back at my June video, you will see how gorgeous it was back then, um, how prolific. And then I deadheaded that and it has come back. It certainly is nothing like it was in June, sorry, but it is still beautiful, still beautiful. So um, I'm going to move on to the rest of Sweet Pea Garden here. Now I am in the middle of Sweet Pea Garden and as you can see the path is up this way so you can see the zinnias on this side. Down here I've got some rose campion that I started from seed. It hasn't really developed into much of anything yet, just the foliage, but I'm hoping by next year I'll have some pretty rose campion here. Bugs are everywhere. Um, right here, ooh, what a big bee. Right here we've got some apricot drift mini roses, which I think are just adorable. And I've got three of those around the fountain here. I think they're sweet. And in between those, I've got some limonium, dazzle rock, 
Those are pretty much gone by at this point. They're just fairly new, so they don't they don't show too much. But I think once they get bigger, they're going to be quite pretty. They've got a very um, sweet color of purple. Um, I've got some uh, some alyssum growing along the base here, and that is uh, purple alyssum, and I kind of love the look of low-growing purple flowers. And here I've got periwinkle creeping phlox, and I think that is just gorgeous, but that's more in uh, the end of May, beginning of June. So the foliage itself is not too, too bad, but I like to replace it and sort of have a purple, purple low-growing section near it. Um, just because I love that look. I've got some lantana, some uh, lemon lantana, some more gomfrina that I put around the perimeter of the fountain. Um, I've had a lot of trouble this year with the fountain because of the moisture that comes off of it. Um, some of the plants just turn kind of rusty. Like my ladies' mantle were all very rusty. I had to cut them right back, and they have gotten a little bit better. We used to use a leaf blower to clean out the fountain, and we haven't done that for a little while, so I think things are looking better. But I am going to be doing some research um, for flowers that are okay with wet feet, and I think it will be a lot prettier around here if I can find some that are more tolerant of being moist a lot of the time. So wish me luck on that. Put comments down below if you have any suggestions for me. I would like to have some pretty, pretty color throughout the season all around this fountain, but so far I have not been able to do that. And that has been one of my issues this year. Um, I tried some pinks. They drowned. That was not pretty. <laughs> um, what else have I got? Let's see, I've got some Cosmos here. I have got some Japanese anemone here. And some more Gomfrina. Oh, I've got some Trolleus. Those were Lemon Globe Trolleus. Um, and here I had some salvia. They have rebloomed a little bit, but their their rebloom has also gone by. Um, some more hardy geranium here. More trolleus here. These look sweet in the spring, but if you cut them down to the ground, um, the blooms, they will come back and give another small little show. Over here in this section of the garden, I've got some echinacea back here. Those are taller, so I plant them in the back and I love how they kind of go over this chair and just make it a cozy little seating area. I've got mallow here, um, party girl mallow. You can see my false indigo, blue smoke I think it's called. I've got oh some artemisia, some silver mound that I hope will come back in the spring. I've got my real charmer daisy here and that looks like it's very healthy for next year already. I already cut this back and it just looks gorgeous. Some meadow rue and that is Nimbus Pink. And back here, I don't know if you can see this. This is adorable. This is new to me this year and I grew it from seed. It's gone by, but it is um, Sahara Rudbeckia and it is adorable. There are some yellow, some pink, some burgundy, just sweet looking, I love it. I've got Yarrow here which is also pretty much gone by. A couple more blooms. Um, and this is summer pastel yarrow. Some Japanese anemone. Just little guys this year, these are new. Some cosmos that I planted from seed. Some more of the um, real charmer daisies. Some campanula. It is really warming up out here, which is nice for September. Um, it's actually been a very, very nice September 
even on the hot side, I would say. It was about 88, 89 this week. So uh, today's the first day we've actually had any of that coolish fall feel. Ooh, did I say fall? I didn't mean to say fall. I don't like that word. Um, anyway, back to the tour. We've got bandana pink lantana um, that actually has done really well out here. It's so pretty. And I don't like the smell of lantana. No, that is not a pretty smell at all. Um, we have got some more Cosmos and they're still in bloom. These are volunteers from last year. They came back to me, um, which makes me very happy because they look so pretty with the zinnia, adding more color when everything else, like I said, has basically gone downhill. Um, I've got some more Nepeta here, stinky, stinky Nepeta. And this sweet little tree is a weeping pussy willow. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can, but it has been eaten alive by the Japanese beetles. But it has maintained its sweet shape all summer and it looks really, really cute. So I won't complain. It's adorable, so healthy and pretty. More Real Charmer daisies. We've got some ladies mantle and I've got some more um, zinnias back here as well as the apricot Cosmos I was telling you about. Aren't those sweet? Seriously, they're adorable. Love them. We've got the uh, Nimbus Pink, the, the Meadow Rue. Uh, you can see some of the incredible blush hydrangea as it surrounds the patio. Back here a little further is the Thai Jade Pink Phlox that absolutely smells delicious. That kind of is the backdrop for this part of Sweet Pea Garden. I've got these adorable uh, Black Eyed Susans. I mean, you really can't have a cottage garden without Black Eyed Susan, can you? Those are so sweet and they add color late into the season. So uh, the, I highly recommend those and they're so easy to grow. I had some daisies back here, some Shasta daisies that were adorable. A few left still blooming. Um, I had some more of the Nimbus Pink and I've got some Cosmos that also are volunteers from last year. I've been very lucky with these um, because they bring so much color all season. They make me happy. Uh, oh, they're all caught up. There we go. I've got some um, Japanese anemone and some more of the Coreopsis back here. I also have um, some salvia that's very visible early in the spring, but as they die back, other flowers pop up that kind of cover the old foliage, um, which is nice. It's kind of nice to try to figure out what's going to bloom and when it's going to bloom um, when you are trying to design your gardens. All right, now I'm going to move over into the courtyard area. Now, as I am here in the courtyard area, um, you can see that the John Davis roses are in bloom. One more time, there's a little guy there. Um, they're pretty much in their final stages. I just need to go back in and deadhead them again and get ready for next June. Um, you can see here the Japanese anemone and they are in also their final stages, but aren't they the sweetest? The bees have had a field day with these. The buzzing around these is just wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. And in front of this, oh, isn't that so pretty? Oh, I'm gonna miss that over the winter. Um, I've got some more Nepeta, and I've got my lady's mantle, of course. I've got some foxglove. This one did not bloom this year, which means it will be very pretty and bloom next year. I have my columbine here. That was gorgeous this year, um, pink and white. And some more Japanese anemone here. Now back in this section, 
I had a very large clump of real charmer daisies that was just gorgeous beside this bench and I just cut those down um, getting ready for photographers to come yesterday they were just getting a little bit messy but as I move over further in the courtyard garden um, you can see where the Japanese anemone are there I do have some boxwood balls that I started with way back in uh, 2019 and I put those in hoping for some um, structure to the garden but in the end they kind of end up getting quite covered over by all the other plants so I'm not sure if I might move them to a place where they will be seen more. In the spring they really do add some structure and a little bit of height um, but I don't know, I don't know. Everything's always up in the air when I'm trying to figure these things out. I've got some day lilies, happy returns. As you can see, my lady's mantle here. Back here are more of the Thai jade pink phlox. And in the background, you can see more of the John Davis climbers um, that have bloomed again but are now fading away. Very sad. Oh, my sweet little echinacea. I should prop you fellas up. You're pretty much past your prime, too. Now, this was a zinnia, and the slugs ate it to the point where it only has one tiny little blossom left and nothing else. But I can't bear to pull it out because of this poor little fella. I don't want to sh cut its life short. I've got another foxglove back there that that will be uh, coming up in the spring. That should bloom next year. Over a little bit further, you can see many more echinacea here. Um, some redhead fountain grass. That really looks so sweet in the fall. I love that. And it does not seem to invade anything before its time. It just kind of stays subtle and then all of a sudden it's beautiful when everything else has faded. So that kind of makes me happy. Um, some rudbeckia some more of the John Davis roses. Back here I had the Popeye phlox that, um, those are gone by now. I've got to chop those back. I've got another one of the box balls that I was telling you about. Some more ladies mantle. One little volunteer echinacea, hello. A little purple cone flower. I've got the hardy geranium and the um, columbine here, some more nepeta, real charmer daisies. As you can see, it's a very repeating pattern, which I think is pleasing to the eye. Um, and that is why I plant that way. Well, we had a bit of a rainstorm, so I had to gather up all my equipment and head inside, but I'm back now to finish up the tour. Um, I did want to talk about this Gara. Hello. I just love it so much. It just adds so much whimsy to the garden, so much movement. Um, I just think it is so sweet. And like I said, sometimes it comes back here in Maine and sometimes it doesn't. But this particular plant, and I have one identical across the courtyard, these both have come back year after year. So um, they just keep getting bigger and better. And I just absolutely love them. Back here I do have another box ball that, um, like I said, just kind of gets buried amongst all these flowers. Oh, these gorgeous echinacea. They were so bright and pink just weeks ago. Um, I've got my usual suspects, my ladies mantle, my nepeta, my hardy geranium, and my uh, silver mound all in um, in a row here, just like I always do, repeating patterns. Um, oh, another little volunteer echinacea. Hello, little coneflower. Um, over in this section, uh, I've got some more Japanese anemone. As you can see here, seen better days. Another little uh, Japanese anemone down in this direction. Um, this, my friends, is the most gorgeous hydrangea. I just absolutely love it. It's actually a uh, tree form hydrangea, but it hasn't grown any taller since I put it in. It just keeps getting 
wider and bigger and I just love it. I mean, look at these flowers. They're just gorgeous. They start off a creamy color, just like the uh, strawberry shake hydrangea that I mentioned earlier. They start out a creamy color and then they get to a little bit of um, a little bit darker pink that I think exactly matches Sweet Pea Cottage. And I always say that and think it's like adorable. Um, and then it gets to a much, much deeper, darker uh, pink, almost a burgundy when it's finally said and done. So this I absolutely love. It's called a Mega Mindy and it is adorable. All right, now I'm going to move into what I call the gazebo garden. Now here in the gazebo garden, um, called gazebo garden because I'm beside the gazebo, very original name. Um, anyway, this garden has been here for years and years and years before the courtyard was even thought of. So I have changed this uh, so many times, I cannot even tell you. Probably every year I've changed it and tried to make it better. Um, it's still not my favorite look, but uh, I think it kind of looks cute this year. So um, I'm getting there. Uh, it gets some sun, but not a lot of sun because of um, the pergola and the stairs. So uh, it's not full sun. Um, I've got two lilac trees in the back. This one does seem to get enough sun to bloom and this poor fella does not. So I still might have to try to figure out something different to put in that corner. Um, but for now it looks kind of symmetrical, so I'll, I'll keep it for now. Um, beside me are some roses. These are um, bubble double roses and they're a pale pink and they are so sweet. I love them. Smell delicious and look adorable. Behind that uh, purple phlox. Here are more of my Black Eyed Susans that I love. Some Gomfrina that I um, planted from seed this year. Uh, you can see a Cleome that I adore. Um, and that also was a volunteer this year. And I'm so glad that it was because it's added so much color to this little corner. Love it. And over here, you can see that I have got some false indigo. This is actually a different variety. Uh, pink lemonade. It's got a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow. It is very cute. Some Cosmos. This was David Phlox. I have seen better days. I've got stone crop sedum down here and off to my left is another one of those redhead uh, fountain grass that is absolutely stunning. I love that. I love that with the Mega Mindy uh, hydrangea. I think they both look so stunning this time of, time of year. Um, I just love them. Um, so I am going to move over now to the pergola garden. I am now standing here in the pergola garden, named because it's near the pergola. Um, also very original. Um, and this garden has also been here for many, many years and has changed over the years. Um, right now, I've got this great big huge nepeta that I will be dividing in the fall. And that's what's wonderful about nepeta, ladies mantle, all, the, all of my favorites, is that you can divide them and move them and share them with your friends, share them with other gardens in your, in your own space. Um, so this one is large. That one will be shared around. I've got my lady's mantle. I've got um, Autumn uh, Joy Sedum here. This gorgeous vine is a hy climbing hydrangea that I love. It's been here for quite a few years and it has not actually uh, climbed all that high yet. It keeps going out, but not all that high. But I think it will get there and I want it to kind of meet up with the wisteria that is taking over the pergola. <laughs> um, and that wisteria has been there for probably eight, nine years. Uh, so this will catch up to it. Behind me, you can see this beautiful limelight hydrangea tree form that is gorgeous. That's been there for a couple of years. On either side are Annabelle hydrangea. Um, which also did very well this year and did not do their usual flopping over. Um, they look quite good. I've got some uh, astilbe that I planted back here. Those are a very, very beautiful pink. I've got my Sahara rudbeckia growing there and a couple more echinacea. Um, and I think that's it. 
it in this section. Now I'm going to move back over to the courtyard on the opposite side. Here in the courtyard, um, you can see, oh, I've got a couple of little uh, volunteer echinacea right in the front. <laughs> Normally they are placed further in the back because they are tall, but when I see them growing, I just can't bear to pull them. Um, huge Japanese anemone here, and then also a huge uh, ladies mantle. Those can be divided this fall as well. Um, back further, you can see zinnia up uh, in the distance. Uh, beautiful yellow rose here, some gorgeous gara. I've got um, Popeye phlox behind the Japanese anemone, um, and that was visible prior to the Japanese anemone going crazy here. Um, I've got my hardy geranium, my columbine, another large lady's mantle, and some real charmer daisies here. Very sweet little section. I love this, and I always have tulips that grow up in the spring as well. So it's a matter of just mixing and matching and trying to keep everything um, looking fresh all season long. Um, so I think I'll move a little bit further down in the courtyard. As you can see here, this is the other side of the courtyard and my beautiful Gora that I must say, stunning, right? Um, actually, I better move that camera because I don't think that you will be able to see anything past it, right? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, just a little bit past the Gora. You can see that I also have the box balls here. I've got three on either side, like I said, for structure, but they are covered up most of the time. But you can see this little guy a little bit. Um, hardy geranium, creeping phlox, which I absolutely love. This one's a pink here in the courtyard, whereas the creeping phlox out in sweet pea is more of a periwinkle color. I've got pink columbine that is adorable. I've got my rudbeckia. I've got another one of the redhead fountain grass here. I'm really glad I put these in last year because they kind of um, do something for me in the fall, whereas everything else seems to just kind of be fading away. I've got some zinnia that actually lived over here in the courtyard. The slugs were insane this year as far as the wet weather, and they just were uh, voracious. They just ate everything in sight. But anyway, I did end up having a few zinnia that survived over here. Um, I've got some sedum back here, some foxglove, another box ball, and some Thai jade pink phlox in the back, um, as well as the Popeye phlox in the back. The, the Popeye phlox tends to bloom first and give a little burst of color, and when they die back, the uh, Thai jade pink take over. So that is a nice um, succession for the background of these gardens. All right, I'm gonna move into the corner. Okay, now I am in the back corner, closer to the arbor of the courtyard on the opposite side. And as you can see, um, I've got the Japanese anemone. These seem to still be blooming a little bit, so that's nice. They must not get as much sun or something. They seem to be protected. Um, I've got those there, I've got these here, um, and behind me you can see this gorgeous gara that is flanking my sweet little, oh, my sweet little fountain, my little uh, angel back here. It, I can hear it running, but it just needs to be cleaned out so it's not going right now. Um, I better get to that. I had some real charmer daisies back here. Um, behind me, you can see this adorable little hydrangea tree. It is similar to the Mega Mindy, but it is not a Mega Mindy. And for the life of me, I cannot come up with its name. I will put it on the screen if I can find its name. I have it somewhere. Um, but obviously very sim similar, panicle hydrangea, adorable. Back here I had a whole lot of beautiful delphinium. Oh my gosh, they were so gorgeous this year. That pretty blue color up against that white fence. Oh, just stunning, just stunning. Uh, back here I have some more um, 
false indigo, and that was the purple variety. And behind that, I had some gorgeous lupin that I absolutely loved. Um, you can see the phlox, the uh, Thai J phlox is over there. Um, I had some foxglove in the back. I think that's about it for here. Down below, I've got ladies mantle, I've got columbine, I've got nepeta, I've got silver mound, and I've got my creeping phlox. Oh, and I have these little asters. I tried to take them out last year. I just decided that I really don't like asters. I don't know why. I don't like the foliage. I don't really like much about them. And by the time fall comes around and they're the only thing blooming, I just, I'm just mad at them. <laughs> so anyway, I tried to take them out, but they seem to come back anyway. Oh, I'll work harder at it this year. Now I am located on the outside of the courtyard, um, on the outside of the fence, obviously. And this year was a little bit of a, uh, an experiment for me as far as my annuals go. But I'll start with my perennials. I was gifted these gorgeous um, seaside swirl, Rugosa roses in pink. And I placed those all along the, um, oh, hole outside of this fence and they ended up being just gorgeous. Um, those are from Monrovia and I'll leave a link down below to um, their website so you can check them out. I just love them. Um, but in this each little section between them I thought that I would make what would be a little bouquet of flowers all coming up together which actually ended up being quite sweet. I did zinnia and um, pink lace flower and cosmos and blue lace flower. Um, I did Queen Anne's lace and I think that was it. And as they all grew up, they really ended up looking quite cute together so that if you look down on them, it would be like looking at a bouquet. I thought that was kind of a cute idea. So um, I ended up liking it quite a bit. Um, yeah, I thought that was real cute. I also have, let's see, um, some echinacea, some, what else do I have? Oh, these zinnias, aren't they something? Just gorgeous, giant zinnias, venary, giant venary, something like that. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, these giant pink uh, zinnias, as tall as me, no taller than me. Oh, hello. Zinnias don't smell like anything. Some more down here, really sweet. Such a gorgeous pink color too. Um, I really do like these a lot, really sweet. I'm not overly thrilled with the red. You know I don't like red in my garden, but um, so I've been kind of cutting these ones back when they come up, and which of course makes more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so ladies mantle, some alyssum, and mostly these gorgeous roses. So we'll see what happens next year. I'm thinking of maybe putting some uh, nepeta where my bouquets are and just kind of having it more uniform looking. Um, I also have a couple of John Davis roses on this side because they would not grow on the inside of this fence because of the sunshine that, that comes this way most of the day. So I um, planted one here, just across the fence from the other one, where the other one is on the other side of the courtyard. And I planted one uh, a little bit further also across from that so that possibly they would sneak through and you'd be able to see them on the other side so it would be more symmetrical inside the courtyard. I don't know. I'm always trying to play with something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the fence and that should wrap up our tour. All right, see you over there. Okay, so I'm on the opposite side of the fence now, and there's not a lot of sunshine back here. There's filtered sun. So I have found, I was gifted these um, Seaside Serenade Martha's Vineyard Hydrangea from Monrovia. And so I placed those all along this edge. You can still see a little bit of bloom down in this direction. They are the most gorgeous color pink. Um, and so I placed those all along the side of this fence and it was 
perfect conditions for them with the filtered sun. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do next year. I'm sure they're going to get a little bit bigger, but they're not huge. They're just going to be perfect for this fence and for the cottage garden. I'm, I really think they're going to be adorable. And like I said, ladies mantle can um, and does do well in the shade. And so I've got those and those. Um, I've got to come up with a couple of different things to put over here. I do have some flocks that kind of made their way under the fence. Um, it's not my prettiest section yet, but it's going to be. It's going to be pretty. Maybe some hostas, but I really don't want to call the deer over to this area. Um, so I don't know. I'm always thinking. <laughs> uh, if you have any ideas for part shade, uh, mostly shade gardens, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I will use one of your ideas for next year. I am going to wrap this up here um, for now, but if you stay till the end, like I said, I'm going to take you way out back to our new project. We broke ground on it just this week. Uh, and it's quite exciting to me. And I'll take you back out there and kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do. All right, I'll catch you in a little bit. standing in what is going to be my new greenhouse. So excited. My uh, husband Dan has been working so hard. He's been actually producing windows, like making windows from scratch to go in here. I saw some um, church-like windows on Marketplace that were about $300 a piece and they only had four of them. So I showed a picture of those to Dan and he has been making enough to fill up this whole big space here. This is going to be um, 16 feet across this way and 20 feet back. It's going to be a nice big size. Um, I am going to use it as a greenhouse, um, but of course I always like to have it a little bit special, so I'm sure that it's going to be cleaned out from the greenhouse use at the beginning of the season and then decorated to my taste. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. Um, don't judge. So anyway, that is our exciting news and I am happy to share that with you and we are going to be doing progress shots, um, progress videos, so please stay tuned, uh, click the like button and subscribe and the little, uh, the little bell, hit the little bell so you don't miss any of this because this is going to be a lot of fun, I think, to watch as we build it. I am actually going to be a, his assistant building. <laughs> Usually I just say, oh, I would like this, I would like that. But this year I am actually uh, going to participate in the building of the greenhouse. So stay tuned. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me here. And as always, if you are interested in joining my community that is just about to launch, it's called the Cottage Garden Society. Um, just go down to the description below and sign up to be notified. And I will let you know as soon as I open up the gates. Okay. All right.
Well, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I hope you had fun and I hope you got some inspiration here at Clark Cottage Gardens. Bye-bye.